The lackadaisical noontime ended up giving way to mind-numbing afternoon classes. Rebounding from yesterday's hunger, I ate too much for lunch today, leaving me in a horrible condition. Keiichi cannot manage... Keiichi thinks he can manage, like... He thought the whole village was trying to kill him, and he was like, I can step in. And now he's like, oh, I ate too much because yesterday I was hungry for a few hours. Ugh, I might have gorged myself a bit too much. I'll have to endure afternoon classes. <laughs> Keiichi-kun, you had an amazing appetite today. Basically, you always eat like a pig. But today was on a whole different level. Yesterday I skipped lunch, right? That hunger just soaked right in. This time, no matter how much I ate, my hunger knew no bounds. Every time Keiji eats, something fucked up happens. True. <laughs> I get you, I get you. But really, Keichan, you always finish your lunch down to the last bite. Heck, even down to the last grain of rice. With food, you show your appreciation for the person who made it by eating it, you know? If you leave any behind, it's rude to the person who put in all that effort. Hearing that, Mion's eyes momentarily widened in surprise, followed by a cool laugh. Keichan, really? At first glance, you seem unruly and responsible, but you're actually pretty conscientious. Well-disciplined or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah. Rena thinks so too. Thinks so too. Keichkun is a lot kinder than he looks. Does she does she repeat stuff when she like? I'm trying. I don't know. Rain is wild. Both of them were probably trying to compliment me, but I had a strange feeling I wasn't being complimented at all. You absolutely are. They're like, oh wow, you're actually really nice, dude. That's not true. I just wanted to say there was a big gap between your appearance and your personality. Okay. I'm gonna say something that I would be noticing right now, even if I hadn't played this before. At this point, I think it is clear that some of the stuff that is written as narration, Keiichi says out loud and doesn't realize he does. Because Mion just answered him. Like, I got to take my prog last night, so I took it now. I'm going to be silly at work, I suppose. Well, that, you know, that sounds fun. I can be a little silly at work. And I'm saying that's not a compliment. Hey, Sonazaki-san, my barakun, we're in the middle of class. How far did you get, Sonazaki-san? Bring your notes up here. Startled. Sonazaki Mion turned, startled. Startled, Mion vocalized a rather easy-to-understand utterance. She was so enthralled in the conversation, she had stopped working completely. Um, uh... Doing alright? You haven't progressed at all. You're in the highest grade, so you have to shape up. At Mion, it looks like she's getting lectured. Poor bastard. <laughs> Appearances can be deceiving, in other words. Actually, appearances might be the opposite of reality. <laughs> hmm? You say some interesting things. Responding to Rena's seemingly profound statement, I turned my gaze to where Sadako was happily studying together with Rikachan. Are you saying that brat Sadako is actually really meek? If I went by what Rena literally said, then that would be the case. I could hardly imagine Sadako being meek and gentle like a girl in a fairy tale. Sadako-chan's been rude lately, but just a while ago she was pretty different. She acted really spoiled and always... Yep. <laughs> Keep this a secret from Sadako-chan, okay? That's Sadako, acting so cute? For Sadako to play coy, I think it would have to be part of some calculated plot. Even if she was to hide behind someone, I wouldn't think it was because she was attached to them. But since it came up, 
I tried to imagine a gentle and coquette Ashkisadako. Hey, Sadako. What is it, Onisama? Sadako smiled cutely and walked towards me. By the way, for every three steps forward Sadako took, for some reason I took three steps away. Hmm? Onisama, why are you running away? Sorry, Sadako. For you to approach me with an affectionate smile on your face, I just have to think it's some sort of trap. That's so mean! Onisama, you meanie! Wah! Uh, sorry, I didn't intend to be so mean. The weeping Sadako came closer to me. I'm a sucker for tears. Click. Huh? A bear trap? My leg was being clamped down on by jagged metal teeth. <laughs> you fell for it. Now for the next part. Sadako raised her right arm triumphantly, and traps began to trigger one after another. <laughs> Remember in uh, Onikakushi, when Keiichi had a horribly disturbing fantasy of uh, Rena beating him to death with a bat, and now he's having a goofy one about Sadako killing him with bear traps? <laughs> Suddenly, the wall sprang forward, throwing me three blocks away. And there I saw a giant metal ball covered in spikes hurtling towards me. On top of that, in the direction the ball would knock me was a giant guillotine. I'm not really sure, but Cage kun you're not thinking of anything completely ludicrous right now, are you? Not really. Not at all. That's a lie. You've got the kind of look on your face that says, I'm going to be crushed by a giant spiked metal ball. How could my expression convey what I was thinking like that? Just a, just a cute little Usada. Sadako plays Shadow Laugh. <laughs> Sorry, imagining a meek and gentle Sadako is impossible right now. I'll try again when I'm in better shape. Next, I looked over at Rika-chan, who was diligently working on some kanji drills. In contrast to Sadako, her default state was meek and gentle. If Rika-chan came at me saying, Onisama, I'd hug her, tightly. I could get used to that. Keichikun, you're drooling. Ah, sorry, sorry. Then how about Rika-chan? Are you saying that her appearance is deceiving as well? Saying that out loud, I felt a tinge of doubt. Was Rika-chan really all sweet? Despite her appearance, she really was quite sly. Sweetly, how do you put it? Evading things deftly? I get the feeling that Rika-chan isn't only just sweet. Her appearance is definitely deceiving. I couldn't put exactly what I was imagining into words, but Rena managed to say what I wanted to. She turned to me with an impish look in her eyes, like she like she was saying, ah, you shouldn't say something like that. When Rika-chan grows up, I'm sure she'll become an incredibly devilish beauty with men wrapped all around her little finger. Don't you think that would be cool? Rena said that lightheartedly, but I, as a man, couldn't laugh at that. The scary part about that was that it felt like it could be true. Shut the fuck up, Keiji. Dumbass. Noticing my gaze, Rika-chan turned toward me and let loose with an angelic smile. Both Rena and I, feeling as if it was directed towards us personally, had our hearts skip a beat. Oh, so cute! So cute! Rena, your nose is bleeding. Inso Keiichi, true? Appearances can be deceiving, huh? Well then, what about our dear leader, Mion? I stared at her as she tried to weasel her way out of her scolding by the teacher. By Rena's theory, that unrefined, calculating, conniving Mion also had a side of her that belied appearances. Then what you're saying is that Mion, despite her appearance, is actually a good person? Bro, what are you talking about? Mion is mad nice to you all the time. 
Mi-chan is a good person. Yeah! Keiji, what the fuck? Oh, well, that is true. But what I'm trying to say is... Yep, yep. I know what you're trying to say, Keiji-kun. Catching on that I was struggling to express my feelings as words, Rena smiled even more brightly. Know what? Mi-chan is mysterious, right? She's a girl, but it's like she's a guy. And that's right. Mion was more than aware that she was a girl, but it was exactly as Rena said. When Mion livened up the mood, it wasn't as though she felt like a guy or a girl specifically, but a friend of the same gender. Huh, that's a really interesting way to word that. If she were a guy, we'd probably be like two peas in a pod. Although, that's the same way it is right now. <laughs> But you see, even that Michan is actually really feminine. Rena, how much did Mion pay you exactly? That's not true. Jeez, I'm trying to have a serious conversation, you know? You know? Rena began to pout, and now probably wasn't the right time to joke around. Michan is the club president, so she's trying hard to lead everybody. But she's really a very cute girl. I don't want you to forget that, Keiji-kun. Rena's gaze focused off into the distance, beyond where Mion was. The Mion I met at Angel Mort was unimaginably different compared to the Mion I normally knew. Flustered and hesitant from the unfamiliar job, it was a far cry from the brash and confident Mion. Even though she had to hurry at work, she went through all the trouble to bring me food when I was on the brink of starvation. And she did so as not, not as Mion, but as Xion. What exactly was Xion to Mion? What kind of person was Mion exactly? Hachkun probably couldn't even begin to imagine. Begin to imagine! <laughs> as if to say it was our little secret. Rena held her finger up to her lips as she giggled. Mion, finally free from the teacher's preaching, returned to her seat, cradling her head to hide her embarrassment. Hm. This old man, you see, thinks that grade school is enough for everything you need to study for in life. Saying that, she plopped down into her seat violently. Mion was actually really feminine. Right. I wonder if I can meet Xion again. I wanted to talk to her again. She just like me. I mean, look. I have met trans people that are like, I am a girl, I am not a boy, but I am a girl and also an old man. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's Mion. That's Mion right there. She just old man moding sometimes. The principal waved around the bell that served as the school chime. The teacher rushed back to the blackboard and began to list everybody's homework assignments. Well, it looks like there's gonna be a lot of homework today. Gotta buckle down. Well then, that means even Rana? Huh? What do you mean? Appearances can be deceiving. Would that apply to you too? Uh huh? <laughs> H-kun, how do you see me? How? How? The Ryugu Rena that I knew sometimes took things too far, but was generally a kind and gentle ideal girl. Really? Really? Oh, his ass said that out loud. Then that makes me happy, I guess. If she was the opposite of what she seemed, that would make her... And if I were really the opposite? Just try saying it. I won't be mad. That's what I felt she meant. Rena is... Uh-huh. Rena is... Even if you were the opposite, you'd still be Rena, right? This question shouldn't have been so nerve-wracking to answer. Maybe it was because the person in question was staring at me, but... 
Even saying that took a strange amount of effort. That's no fair, Cage Kun. It bothers me when you say it that way. Uh -huh. Perhaps unable to endure my silence, Rena's face began to burn red with embarrassment. Oh, it's fine. Anti Rena would be the kind of girl to run you down with an axe in a forest. So true. What, were you guys worried? Rena, hey Chan, let's go home. Mian walked over and started getting ready to go home. Whenever school is over, she really does get noticeably more energetic. It was the same relaxing walk home as always. Digging around my pocket on a whim, I noticed something that sh should have been there was missing. What's the matter, Kei-chan? The key to my house I always carry around is gone. Man, where did I lose it? It's fine today since my parents are home, but still, this is bad. That share is troublesome. Did you forget it somewhere? Or did you drop it? Which one was it? Did I take it with me this morning in the first place? Huh? Huh? Key chunk, did that key have anything that would make it stand out? Yeah, it's on a keychain. It was a blue fur seal. Something I made for summer homework a long time ago. Huh? Does it have its eyes shut like it's taking a nap? Oh, how did you know? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mion looked away and began to whistle. Um, see, you went for dinner at Angel Mart a couple days ago, right? That night, the staff found a key, and there was a fur seal keychain attached to it. He did show that to Rena in book one, yeah. As she said that, she suddenly grew flustered and added that Shion had told her about it. Huh? So I dropped it then. <laughs> but aren't you glad they found it? I'm sure they're looking after it for you. That's right. Why don't you go? Shion looks the same as me, so you'll know her by sight. That was a rather unexpected development. Once again, I had no choice but to go and meet with Shion. But I also had to thank her for the bento from yesterday. Besides, taking some time and chatting with this other side of Mion might be interesting. Half-jokingly, I began to think about things like this. Right, Angel Moi, was it? I'll head over to Xion's restaurant and get my key back. While I'm at it, having a nice spot of tea might not be a bad idea. <laughs> you sound like an English gentleman. That totally doesn't suit you, Kei-chan. Is this the restaurant? The one that Mi-chan's little sister is working at? Yeah. Why don't we go in together, Rena? Sorry to disappoint you, but I have plans with my father today. Some other time. Rena seemed pretty out disappointed about having to miss such a great opportunity. You said they're twins, but do they really look that much alike? Enough to mistake which is which? Yeah, they're totally the same. At least on the outside. Unlike Mion, she's well-mannered and really cute, though. In response to my teasing, Mion pouted and began to argue with me. I couldn't help but burst out laughing at Mion's little farce. Is this the first time Rena's parents have been mentioned to also be in Hinamizawa? Yes! It is. After all, they weren't just identical, they were the same person. After going home, I changed my clothes and dug the, my bike out of the garage. Just thinking that I would be able to make Xion again gave me a mysterious feeling. Xion, a name for a different kind of Mion. She was a mysterious and ridiculous person, believing that she had fooled everyone like that. I noticed that I was pedaling along quite happily. Could it be that I was looking forward to meeting Xion? I felt a sense of giddy anticipation, like I was heading towards a new friend's house for the first time. 
What Rena said about Mion actually being really feminine sprang to mind once again. The guilt from spying on another side of Mion, self-consciousness from being the only one that knew about that side, these feelings mixed together. That was Shion for you, Mion's little twin sister. Until she felt like coming out and admitting she was Mion, it was fine to just call her Shion, right? Mion might be trying to have some fun by acting out a different persona. As I reached the top of the steep hill, the horizon expanded before me. I was almost at the station. The last time I wasn't embarrassed since I was here with Dad, but this time I was alone. I felt strangely self-conscious about it. Meet Xi'an, get my key back. That was all this task was supposed to be. If I dawdled around like this, maybe Xi'an would find me before headed in for work. What's Xi'an's arc- what's Mion's arcana? I vote Empress? Hmm. Hmm hmm hmm. What is? That's a great question. I want to try to answer those maybe once we're a little further in. It would be really funny for her to actually just have a twin sister. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing, my Bara Keiichi? You're just here to get your key back, you know? It's not like you're some love-struck schoolboy here to hand over a love letter. Ah, the thoughts inside my head were slowly, slowly turning into a jumbled mess. I came to the realization that I was downright giddy. That's why, for just a bit, just a tiny little bit, I got a little carried away and did something really stupid. I kicked over a parked motorcycle that was blocking the sidewalk. It was in the way, sure, but there was absolutely no need for me to kick it. I definitely think I got too carried away. Thunk, clack, crash. As the three bikes toppled one after another like dominoes, the loud noise they called snapped me back to my senses. Oh, shit. The hell you think you're doing? The owners of those three bikes were right there. They looked exactly like what you'd call thugs up to no good. They lifted their heads up in an imposing manner and yelled angrily in a way that I had never heard before. Like, ura, ura. The three of them beelined towards me. The worn-down heels of their thin-soled shoes slapping noisily against the pavement. I could only stare listlessly, as if I were watching some far-off event that didn't concern me at all. What if Keiichi just got his ass beat and died? By the time I realized it, I had been grabbed by the collar and lifted up onto my tiptoes. Don't be playing dumb. You knocked them over, didn't you? Holy shit, the way that is written. Huh? Ura! Doshita! The three thugs were completely ignoring the rules of grammar, but the way they spoke was enough to make me tremble. Just like that, my composure drained away. My legs buckled and my throat drew grew dry enough to crack. Oh, finally, we're getting a My Bara Keiichi describes how pants-shittingly scared he is. I I'm sorry, I accidentally... Accident my ass! You kicked it, didn't you, dumbass? I was completely at fault, so there was nothing I could say in my defense. As a result, I was pulled even higher. The hell, man? The paint's all scuffed. Yo, brat, who put you up to this, eh? This is your goddamn fault. The three of them continued to yell at me. I had no idea what each of them were saying. Getting further enraged that I was only listening while dumbstruck, they grabbed an empty plastic crate from a nearby store and began to smash it repeatedly against a telephone's pole. What does that do? Cracks formed in the crate, plastic shards flying everywhere. They then slammed it full force into the shuttered storefront. The shutter let out a frighteningly loud noise. Still not satisfied, they flipped over a case of empty cans, scattering its contents all over the place. Bro, they're just, they're just breaking shit. This was not normal. It was something you saw often on television or in manga, but I never thought seeing it in person would be this terrifying. I became painfully aware that the safety of civilized society was only held up by such a frail concept as morals. 
My knees clatter together normally, noisily. Keiji responding normally to violence. Static began to pepper my vision. This is what you would call absolute terror. There was nothing I could do to stop this frightening spectacle of violence. I could only pray for help. The fear I felt was just too much. Would somebody help me? My gaze floundered around the surrounding area. It's Macho Man, Scott Steiner, and Hulk Hogan, you're right. I was surrounded by these three hoodlums. No way there would be a passerby brave enough to intervene. Maybe this would, was what you would call reaping what you sow. If I were a passerby, there would be no doubt I'd ignore what was going on. So this was somewhat of a cosmic retribution. Who can say something? Wait, why do you get... British. I'll fucking stab you. <laughs> Why do you get Irish? <laughs> Angry yelling loud enough to rattle my eardrums spewed right in front of my face. My waning consciousness was forcefully dragged back to the forefront. The thug had cocked back his free hand and twisted his body with a sudden metallic taste filtered through the back of my throat. A chill ran down my spine like a jolt of electricity. Seeing what was going to happen next, I squeezed my eyes shut as tightly as possible and gripped my teeth. You're making quite the racket, you stupid pieces of trash. Get out of my sight. That voice was a short distance away. Still holding me by the collar, the three thugs spun around to look behind them. The fuck you say? Standing there was Shion. I mean, Mion. She stood there, displaying an imposing stature that I'd never seen before. She didn't have the same look on her face as she did when we were playing around during club. Those were the eyes that would instill fear in anyone who looked upon them. The eyes of a raptor. They were the epitome of terror. At the same time, they were the most reassuring things in the world. I'll only say this one more time. Let go of Keichan and get lost. Mion, without an ounce of fear, laid down her ultimatum. Of course, there was no way those three wouldn't go absolutely berserk. The situation instantly turned explosively dangerous. You fucking bitch! I'll fucking bash your head in! I cannot believe. Stop it, Mion. These guys are like rabid dogs. No amount of bluffing will work. Mion, it's dangerous. So ru I knew what I was saying was pathetic, but I couldn't let Mion get involved in this. I don't know why they're British. No matter how you looked at it, Mion was only bluffing. Kuno don't take no shit from a green chick. But, did Mion even know the meaning of the word bluff? However, the reason behind everything soon became apparent. They were slowly increasing in number, little by little. At first, it was only businessmen on their way home stopping to take a look. Then it was housewives in the middle of taking a gander. Next, what seemed like the owner of some store showed up, and it was pretty clear he wasn't just looking. Around Mion, there were already about seven people gathered. It felt different than people coming out to support a friend. If I had to say why, it was because the group that gathered was diverse in age and gender. The three thugs seemed to slowly realize that there was something strange about the situation. Who the hell are these guys? Behind them, at some point, four more people of different clothes and ages had gathered. A girl who looked to be in middle school, a man wearing a bakery apron, an old lady in a house cleaning smock, more and more people of various ages, their gazes comparable to Mion's were of hostility, of intimidation. Before I realized it, over ten people had formed a ring around us. At that minute, five elementary schoolers ran in and joined the circle. There were some familiar faces, some of our classmates. Then these people were residents of Hinamizawa? More and more people from Hinamizawa gathered around. 
In obvious contrast, the residents of Okinomiya were passing by as quickly as possible. The fuck are you guys? Go the fuck away! The group surrounding us had suddenly swelled to around 20 people. Completely encircled, the faces of the thugs began to show the first signs of panic. Nobody spoke a word, Mion included. That made everything completely unnatural, and depending on which side you were on, completely terrifying. Only the thugs' voices echoed out like they were screaming. Somebody took a step forward, closing the gap between them. As they did, everybody else took a step forward, shrinking the circle. The hoodlums went pale as they were pushed together, back to back, still yelling angrily. They were trying to string together vulgarities, but for some reason it sounded like they were crying out for help. Alright, 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 what's going on here? What's going on? It was sudden. A solidly built officer cut his way through the crowd. At some point, two police cars had arrived. Some passerby had undoubtedly called for them. Several burly officers appeared from inside the second vehicle. Oh, officer. Good timing. There you go. The extortionists caught red-handed. Please arrest them. The fuck? This brat's the one that's in the wrong here. Mion, returning to her usual self, was nonchalantly pointing out the hoodlums to the police. Of course the thugs were furious, but now that it had come to this, there was nothing they could do. It was their loss. Okay, okay, come over here for a sec. Come on already. The officers handcuffed the thugs and dragged them toward the patrol cars. The oh, fuck, let me go! We're the victims here, are you listening, damn it? No matter how much of a ruckus they caused, the officers paid no heed. There's like one from Boston, there's like one from Ireland. They had three different voices. Arrested for being British in Hinamizawa. In the blink of an eye, they were crammed inside the two vehicles. They could still be heard yelling while inside the police cars, but th what they were saying was no longer intelligible. Are you alright? Are you injured? He was probably a detective. <laughs> The man leading the police peered at my face. Oishi jump scare? No, not really. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a silver lining then. Well then, have a good year. The portly man, after taking a quick look around, addressed the crowd. Thank you, citizens, for your timely report. Thanks to your efforts, we were able to keep the peace today. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Thank you for your hard work, Detective Uishi. As a citizen, I thank you for your daily efforts. It is an honor for a detective from the First Division to come out all this way. Look at the look on her face. The way she on talk didn't have a very pleasant tone. It was a coincidence. I happened to hear the call over the radio on my way back from the prefectural office. I just made a little detour. Please keep up the good work. I pray for success in your future endeavors. <laughs> Aw, shucks. It's a good thing there were no injuries, though. Oishi-san, we're done here. Let's go. Well then, have a good year. I'm sorry, could you make way? The detective named Oishi, after jo jovially making pleasantries, lumbered over to the waiting police car. It quickly set up down the city street. My favorite cop, one good cop, Oishi. It was over so quickly. So quickly I was dumbstruck. I didn't even get to ask the officer what was going on. It was like they came here quickly to disperse the mob before any trouble could start. After making sure the police cars had left, Mion snapped her fingers sharply. All right, that's a wrap. And don't come back. That was the signal. The tension melted away in an instant as everyone began smiling. Uh, yeah, Mirana, it's a time loop. Everything fine. Everything fine. Everything fine now. Hee hee hee. Everything cool. A middle-aged man helped me up. Are you okay, young Maibara? Next time, pick your fights a bit better. It's not like I wanted to fight. Are you hurt anywhere? If you hit your head, it would be a good idea to get an x-ray taken. 
An older lady I didn't know the name of was concerned about my injury. You were lucky this happened right in front of the station when it was busy, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to gather as many people. Next time, be more careful. It's kind of hard to pin suspicion on Oishi from his reaction to Keiichi's death in book one. He did seem pretty distressed about Keiichi's phone call in the phone booth. Next time, be more careful. City kids these days are pretty unruly. I was even warned by the old lady in the smock. As Shion finished applauding the dispersing group for their efforts, she strode over to me. He is alternating between calling her Mion and Shion, it's interesting. Well, well, you're pretty good, Kei-chan. But I also think you should be more careful about who you pick a fight with. Thanks, Mion. You saved my bacon there. Like I said, I'm Shion. She made a troubled expression as she turned her gaze downward, blushing in embarrassment. I heard from my sister. That girl that fur seal keel chain Blah! That's such a hard sentence. That fur seal keychain was yours, Keichan? Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you for the posture check side. And the hydrate. Ah, I was just heading to the restaurant. And you ended up feeling so excited that you got mixed up in something weird? <clears throat> now it was my turn for my face to go red. I didn't want to admit that she was spot on. Well, I was just unlucky. But you really saved me, Xi'an. You don't have to thank me. So, if you see somebody else getting bullied, help them out, okay? We value that kind of thing very highly here. Yeah, Sarge, stream's been good. It's been fun. Why does that face look like an old sprite? It's just Xion making a very devilish face, you know? I was well versed in that sense of camaraderie, but the way I was rescued just now, something seemed a little off about that. While I was helped out, it was honestly to an almost disturbing degree. You're coming into the restaurant, right? You must be tired, so why don't you relax for a bit? My treat. Game, something up? Seems like she caught the glimmer of suspicion in my eyes. Without waiting for my answer, Xion began walking. Igu Rashi. When they cry. I think I'm buying into Xion and Neon being different people? Hmm, interesting. Or at least actual DID. At least cool- after cooling off a bit inside the restaurant, little by riddle, little, I realized I was still on edge. There were spots here and there on my body that were hurt, probably because I had been so stiff with nervousness. Xion, who had changed into her uniform, brought over two glasses of iced coffee. Here you go. Iced coffee on the house. Just bring this coupon with you to the register and it'll be no charge. Patheticness really knew no bounds. But since she went through the trouble, I might as well take her up on the offer. Like he thinks they're the same person and dates both of them unknowingly? Hmm. Even though it had started out as such a lovely day, I had to get carried away and do that stupid thing. I had completely ruined it. But really, you saved my hide there. I've really come to see you as reliable. Yeah, Angel Moore outfit. Even I was scared, but Keichan was in trouble, so... I had to be brave and do my best. While a little embarrassed by what she just said, Xion made a show of folding her arms boldly. Xion, really, thank you. I was thanking Xion, but I really wanted to thank Mion. Mion, really, thank you. Now, now, cheer up a little. If you feel indebted, then when you have the chance, you should help somebody in need. Like, for example, if I'm ever in trouble, please come and save me. Ah, yeah, of course. It's a promise. <laughs> you absolutely have to. Taking advantage of my words, she seemed happy about my promise. So if I'm ever in trouble, Keichan will come and save me. 
I hope trouble comes soon. Ah, you finally smiled. She said as she smiled herself, poking me in the cheek. A downtrodden K-chan is as good, in, as, as good as an imposter. Come on, smile, smile. <laughs> what's, what's wrong? What's wrong, chat? That, that tickles. Clap. <laughs> Thanks to Xion's meddling, I finally cheered up a little. All the muscles in my body that had stiffened because of that incident began to relax a little. When you're in a better mood, don't you get a little hungry? I'm kinda hungry, so I wanna eat some pancakes or something. Do you want some too, Keichan? I wanted to show a little restraint, but restraint really wasn't my thing. That's why I replied without any. They're good, right? I'm pretty picky when it comes to pancakes. <laughs> Don't worry, our pancakes have a pretty good reputation. Xion ordered some pancakes from a nearby waitress. An employee ordering from another employee seems kind of weird. Hey, hey, speaking of that, wasn't Xion in the middle of a shift? She's just been slacking off while talking to me. I told my uncle that you saved me a lot when I was surrounded by hoodlums, so he's rewarding you. So I have the manager's permission. That's exactly the opposite of what happened. Is that alright? It's perfectly fine! <laughs> By the time the pancakes arrived, we had entered into a relaxed conversation. I love these Keiichi Shion scenes. As the two of us ate pancakes, we livened the mood with some chit-chat. About what was on TV, celebrities, that kind of thing. Hobbies, food, really nothing more than idle chit-chat. Talking together like this, I once again became conscious of Xion being a girl. Keiichi- Hey now, that's funny talk, my Bara Keiichi. Xion and Mion are the same person. If there was anything different between them, it was only whether or not Mion admitted she was Mion. But given that, how come our conversation was this different? Keichan, you don't think of my sister as a girl, do you? That's not true. If she were a guy, I'd punch the living daylights out of her. <laughs> I think the reason you guys get along so well is because you have that kind of platonic relationship. It's a pretty rare and enviable thing to have, don't you think? I don't get what you're saying. But it really would be a waste to treat her like a girl. <laughs> Gender is the cage who beats you up or harasses you. <laughs> hey, Keichan, that's sexist. <laughs> Hearing the word sexist was cause for introspection. What was I pre prejudiced against Mion and Xion for? Mion was Mion. She was the best friend a guy could have, no reservations, and head and shoulders above me when it came to club activities. This is why Higarashi is a... is a fucking... It's a subversion of everything you think it is! If I had met her five years earlier, my life would have probably been a lot more fun. Of this I had no doubt. Then what about Xion? She was Mion's little sister, and it hadn't even been three days since we met. Her relationship was much more distant, as the only thread we had in common was that I knew her sister. And for Xion, it was the same. I was somebody she met three days ago only because I was a friend of her sister's. Keiji hears the word sexism once, immediately reconsiders his entire life. Liter- like, literally. The difference between Mion and Xion? Friendliness? Familiarity? Playing around with those unclear thoughts for a while, I had stopped listening to Xion. Hypothetically, okay? Are you listening? Ah, sorry. Yeah, I'm listening. This is just a hypothetical question, okay? Both me and my sister are in trouble, okay? We're dangling off the side of a cliff. Which one of us do you save? You can only save one. Xion. Xion, baby girl. 
She wasn't saying it to tease me, but had a playful tone behind her voice. That, that's not a nice question. I want to save you both, but I can't do that, right? Right. You can only save either Xion or Mion. Who do you save? If it were Mion, I don't think she'd be in that situation in the first place, as it's something she could easily get out of herself. But what about the normal, frail Xion? I guess I'd have no choice. It's not my sister, right? If Mion and Xion were different people, I suppose it would come to that. I couldn't confirm nor deny it. She should have been smiling, but her gaze was locked firmly to mine. In other words, that's it, isn't it? My sister is... Huh. <laughs> Sorry, I messed up what I was trying to say. Xion was trying to talk in a light-hearted manner, but I felt like there was something more behind her words. Was Mion trying to tell me something through Xion? Not being able to put a finger on exactly what it was was vexing. Xion, to hide her embarrassment, turned the conversation around. More importantly, just now, were you surprised? When everybody kept on showing up? Of course I was. If it were Rena or Sadako, that would have been one thing, but for all those people, young and old, to gather, they were all from Hinamizawa, right? Yeah, that's right. Everybody in Hinamizawa is pretty close-knit. An enemy of one is the enemy of all. <laughs> Nobody is going to look on from the sidelines. <laughs> They're a pretty reliable group of residents. If somebody is being picked on, then everybody unites to get rid of the bully. It kind of sounds like the Mafia or the Yakuza's brand of unity. Mm, thank you for the hydrate, Sarge. It sounds good, Marana. Thank you, thank you. I hope you get to catch more of the stream, and I hope work goes super, super well. Wait, nobody on the sidelines? That contracts with what Oishi said. You shouldn't say something like that. It's something you should be thankful for. You were saved by that unity, weren't you? Never forget to show your appreciation. I half-heartedly agree. I knew full well I should be more appreciative. Everybody really is close-knit, aren't they? Maybe it's because of tradition? Inamizawa has been in danger of becoming a ghost town on several occasions. There's been a history of the villagers uniting together each time to fight for the village's continued existence. For example, Eichan, did you know about the Hanamizawa Dam Project? Hanamizawa Dam Project? Let's see. I feel like I've heard somebody talk about it before. About ten years ago. Oh, if that if that face comes back, uh, yeah, I'll show the old sprite. This is interesting though because uh, nobody mentioned this to him in the other loop. About ten years ago, there was a sudden proposal to build a dam here, which would have submerged Tanamizawa underwater. Oh, that story. I think I heard my dad talk about that. But I'm pretty sure that plan was cancelled, right? We made them cancel it. Everybody banded together, so that was a well-earned victory. That sounded pretty much like the story I heard. The protest intensified to the point where it was featured in newspapers and magazines. As a result, the plan was suspended. The whole story with the dam apparently started before I was born. At first, the proposal was only for exploratory purposes, or a small dam to control erosion. But then, the cat was let out of the bag. If it were if completed, it would have been the biggest dam in Japan. Not just Hinamizawa, but several villages upstream would have been submerged as well. The protests immediately began. Petitions to cancel or relocate the project were drafted and submitted to the Diet. They even went so far as to go to the Ministry of Construction in Tokyo to hand over a direct appeal to the minister. 
The previous landowner sued the government, stating that there were inconsistencies in the purchase agreement and that the transaction should be nullified. Owners of yet unacquired land split their properties, increasing the number of landowners in order to stifle the project. I love how Higurashi becomes Yakuza Zero every once in a while. It was all very precious when the land acquisition was still about money. Eventually, they started relying on imminent domain in order to seize the land. It started at that point. The riot police began to get violent. Riot police? You mean the police? Why would they act violent? <laughs> oh, my Barakeichi. Oh, God. They punched. They kicked. There was a time I was hit. Right around here, I think. My skin split open and a whole lot of blood spilled out. Saying that, Shion indicated her temple by poking at it. What happened to the police? Filing a complaint against the riot police for poli police brutality would seem kind of strange for some reason. Oh, would it? Uh, Ryushiki has some thoughts about some of the institutions of Japan, like the police and child protective services. Those are two institutions in Japan that the author has some thoughts about. <laughs> some of those who work forces, etc. Yes, yes, <laughs> you're extremely right, Jack. <laughs> Naturally, they wouldn't pay heed to something like that. You wouldn't be able to establish proof on who exactly hit you, and they could justify their actions by saying you were interfering with police duties. <laughs> is the author based? The author is really based whenever he's not being kind of weird with the kids, you know? Hi, Spade. Welcome. <laughs> My Nana went off like a firework. After that, it was amazing. Like a full-scale war. We weren't just going to sit by and idly file complaints. We went on the offensive. First, in order to call attention to the government, they filed a temporary injunction in court. Then, in order to gain public support, they called in prominent scientists to state that Hinamizawa was a valuable nature preserve. They pressured the prefectural and municipal assemblies, saying that the prefectural governor ignored his constituents when he approved the project and demanded his resignation. They completely and thoroughly denounced him. Naturally, in Hinamizawa, a ferocious conflict worthy of being called the Dam War began. In order to suppress the police's brutality, they coordinated with the network channels and exposed the violence of the riot squad members to the public. On top of that, they put together a special expose themed around the government repressing the citizens and aired it nationally. It worked wonders. Following that, the SWAT teams had their hands cuffed. Day after day, the petitions and demonstrations continued. Propaganda was used to help garner support. Propaganda? The circle of support gradually expanded outwards from Hinamizawa. It's that look, the Sonozaki family, they get shit done. Who knows what that shit is, but they get it done. Either that bore fruit, or the government finally decided against it. It was announced that the dam project was indefinitely suspended just a few years ago. We did everything we could. The entire village banded together and fought. At that time, we were desperate. But now that it's over, it's actually become a pretty good memory. The villagers' feelings of solidarity and unity still haven't faded. Xi'an said that as she focused off into the distance. Not mentioning the dismemberment, huh? I felt those eyes weren't filled with anguish, but rather a sense of pride. That kind of solidarity is pretty nice. I'll say it once again, Sonazaki Shion, matriarch of the Sonazaki clan. You don't see it too often. Bridging the generational gap and unifying the region. I think so too. The dam project was a trial. I think just the fact that we were able to overcome it is huge. The fear I was feeling until just now gradually began to fade. So, this is interesting. 
things about Hinamizawa were starting to really freak Keiichi out in the first loop. But then Shion just straight up told him about, like, everything. I mean, she left out the dis dismemberment, yes. But the citizens of Hinamizawa didn't do that. It was the, um... It was the dam workers. So there's no real reason for Shion to bring it up here. You know? When people began to show up one after another while I was engaged with those thugs, I thought it was frightening. But now, I felt from the bottom of my heart that I had been rude. The villagers prepared to defend their homeland to the death, the sense of solidarity that fostered. It might seem impudent to say this, but I was a little jealous. Oh, the dam workers might have been from Hinamizawa or not, I'm not actually sure, but um, the, uh, the foreman, the, like, the, the Hinamizawa defense force, the Onigafuchi force, didn't do the murder, you know? Like, it wasn't, it wasn't the citizens of Hinamizawa. It might seem impudent to say this, but I was a little jealous. If I had been in Hinamizawa when the protest against the dam was going on, I might have been able to share in that sense of solidarity. Keichan, you weren't here at the time, so I don't think you can fully feel the solidarity in the village. But everybody shares it. Thoroughly. Even with somebody who just moved here like you, Keichan. She couldn't have been more right. So many people got together to help me out when I just moved here. Even though they were strangers whose names I didn't even know. A hot feeling began welling up inside me. When I lived in the city, I didn't even know my own neighbors. I thought that was natural. But here, that was an absurd and pathetic thing. Even though I thought of them as strangers, all the other villagers viewed me as a comrade. Happiness and warmth. I was acutely aware of those feelings as they gradually welled up inside me. Sonazaki-san, the manager wants you to work the floor. A more senior waitress waved her hand and called out to Shion. It seemed like it was just in time for work. Ah, okay, I'm coming. Sorry, looks like I have to get to work now. It's fine. Thanks for hanging out with me, it was fun. Oh. Are you going home? Yeah, my mom gets fussy if I'm not home by dinner time. It seemed that Shion wanted to say something, but she swallowed her words. Like we hadn't talked enough, that kind of feeling. Looking at that expression, I regretted saying something that had disappointed me on like that. Bro can't even- it's the same page, and he cannot decide what to call her. I was about to say that I could stay for a little longer when Shion got up from her seat. <laughs> Here, if you use the coupon, it should cover the pancakes as well. Saying that, she showed me a coupon booklet as she tore out a few sheets and handed them to me. <laughs> Convenient, isn't it? It's a perk I get on top of my salary. It's okay. I can pay for the pancakes myself. Hey, hey! Being so reserved doesn't fit you, Kei-chan. If I were my sister, you would have gladly let me pay for it. She said as she laughed, gently stopping me from opening my wallet. Being told so with such an encouraging smile really resounded with me. Sonozaki-san, sorry, could you take care of the register? Ah, yes, right away. Later, today was fun. Saying that, Shion smiled one more time at me. Oh, Mion, thanks a lot for today. I owe you one. If you really think that, then return the favor. I'm looking forward to it. After I said that, I realized I mistakenly called her Mion. I didn't know if she realized it or not, 